looks like we're ready to start our sermon, uh, sermon time, our church service. Let's all stand up and see the Lord is in his holy temple together. please. Father in heaven, as we come here on your holy Sabbath day, we think of our mother's life, a special day that's dedicated to them. We wouldn't be here without our mothers, and we think of all the training they've given us early in life, Lord, to talk about your life and what Jesus was like, and teaching us how to at the knees of our mothers of how God is to them and to us. Bless us this day, and be with each and every here, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning on this beautiful day. Our opening hymn is hymn number 652.
seated, please? Now it's time to bring our prayers and our petitions before the Lord. Has the Lord blessed you in any special way this week or any special request you have? Mike? Amen, amen. I know his back was bothering pretty bad the past couple of weeks. Anyone else? Cindy? I didn't see it go up yet, but I knew it would. Well, why don't you um, give an update on Pete and, and, um, and Carrie? All right. I'll just praise God again that I got all my paperwork in for a new job. This newly retired person <laughs> um, passed my physical. I'm in good health, and I'm praising God for that. Amen. 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 I'll be a working woman again at least one day a week. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. um, I just want to praise God for the women's ministry this week. We had a wonderful uh, praise service for life, and I encourage every woman we brought up for because it was truly a blessing to my life. And I hope, um, I know others have also felt the same. Amen, amen. Yes? I want to pray for the pastor family. That big. Um, I'd like to remember Cedarbrook School in our prayers also. They'll be closing down in June, first week in June, I guess, for the summer, June 4th. And um, it's been quite a year for our schools, but we think of Cedarbrook as that's one close to home here. And uh, let's pray for our, for our Cedarbrook School, plus all the, the young kids in school today. And um, it's, it's going to be difficult almost missing a whole year of school, even with all the online stuff. It's uh, Kids need to be regimented in certain things, I believe. So, um, Anyone else? Oh. Oh, Vanusa. Oh, I'm sorry, Vanusa? Two things. Um, first, this guy's birthday yesterday. Oh. Oh, Thank really. God for that. And then also my dad, uh, I asked for prayer last week. He was under the weather and we were suspecting COVID. He did get it, uh, but he's feeling Pretty good. He almost, you know, 100% that he's in normal health. Plus, thank God for that. And as well as a few other family members that for some reason all contacted at the same time, even though they weren't like together or anything, but he was just like so happy around the same time. They're all feeling good and good. Amen. Amen. Anyone else this morning? I'll go ahead and give the update on Karen. Okay, sure. A lot of you might have gotten a Zoom. Prayer notice yesterday for Carrie Steele, Peter Steele's wife. Um, she did have emergency surgery, and um, she survived the surgery. And as far as we know, she's doing well, but still not out of that critical condition yet. But to me, it's like, you know, God took having the surgery out of her hand and had the surgery. So to me, that's a sign that she's going to be all right. It was God's will that she had the surgery because I don't think she was leaning that way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, so I just continue to, you know, Pete just, God is with him. You can see God is giving him peace and he's clinging to God through Amen. all this. And Amen. Heidi too. Heidi woke up and, out of the surgery and was grateful and praising God that she was even awake. So, I mean, Carrie, what did I say? Hi, Heidi. Heidi. <laughs> And um, so I just want to praise God Amen. for Amen. his healing hand and care for Carrie and Peter. And um, also, like you mentioned Cedarbrook, I want to um, also thank God that uh, 
my son-in-law, Tyler, was hired to be the new seventh and eighth grade teacher because uh, Zimalis is moving to Pennsylvania, as most of you may have heard. And um, so I'm just grateful Amen. for that honor. And I pray that God will continue to work in his life and in Cedar Brooks. And uh, all our volunteers, we had P teacher appreciation at Cedar Brook this past week. And uh, I'm just grateful for all our teachers and all their hard work and our volunteers like Francois and, and Marilou. So, um, but continue to pray for them. We have three new staff members starting this next school year. And so, amen, amen. Yeah. It's funny, we pray for different people. When we hear the, the, the good results, it buoys you up inside to want to pray even more and be more concentrated for it. Because I mean, the past couple of months, our church has been very, our church has been very devoted to prayer with our Wednesday night prayer group, the prayer seminar we had a couple of weeks ago. And I think it's going to continue. And it's going to get catch people on fire. And uh, it's, it's going to really, you know, it, you know, it's going to bring a lot of blessings to our church. Are there any sound requests this morning? Are you joining me now for prayer? We're so grateful we could come here this morning on this your holy Sabbath day. We hear many results of the, the prayers that have been going up to you, Lord, from our, the needs in our church. A lot of health issues, Lord. A lot of people getting sick and, and, and getting mild cases and, and returning to health, Lord. We want to thank you for each and every one of these. Lord, this, these pressures are precious in our lives, Lord. We think also a lot of our young people, Lord. Uh, they're going through a, a very specific, uh, stressful time, Lord. Be it the older young people, the teenagers and, and, and the older kids, and also the young ones, Lord, who are probably don't even realize what's going on when they miss so much school. We ask the Father to be with the families, draw close to them, and um, help them to, to get a, a lift up, Lord, in the learning that they might have missed, or the way it was taught, and um, just to get into that activity of, of learning more about their schoolwork, more importantly, learning about you. And Father, we pray for Cedarbrook School again, to draw closer to that. And also our families, Lord. Our, our church is made up of people which are made up of families, Lord. Be with each, each and every family here present. And be with those families, Lord, who don't come as much, Lord. Draw close to them and, and prick their hearts, Lord, the desire to come back to join us in fellowship with us once again. And finally, Lord, I'd like to pray for our whole church, Lord, around the world, the structures and whatever's going on. We ask the Father for the Holy Spirit to take control, Lord, and finish up this work speedily. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. time for our offering, as we've had for the past year. Our offering today, the, uh, there'll be no collection. It'll be in the plates in the back. As you come in, you can drop off your collection there or when you're leaving. Either one. We pray, Lord, that uh, you'll be faithful in your tithes and your offerings to grow God's work in our community and, um, and around the world. Our scripture today is from Pro Proverbs 31. This is the last proverb in the book of Proverbs, but the whole proverb is written for a virtuous wife. It's a very special one. So I'm just be reading verses 27 and 28. She watches over the waves of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. 
May the Lord add his blessing to our reading this morning. At this time, Daniel will have our sermon. And uh, it's all yours. Always a uh, happy Sabbath. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> Very appreciated. <laughs> I'm thankful for the privilege to be here in the house of the Lord. And it's always a blessing. This is a very special Sabbath. Uh, first, because we know that our God is alive and reigns forever. As special. Uh, it's a very special occasion f for me because this is women's ministry and I have the privilege to speak on that on this day and I'm very thankful uh, to God and to Paula who asked me if I could preach on, to, on, uh, on this Sabbath. This is a very uh, great opportunity uh, to share the Word of God with my brothers and sisters. Happy to be here. I know maybe, I don't know if there's a nurse here, but uh, we know uh, this is Nurses Week. We want to show our, our appreciation to the nurses and also the teachers uh, here in our church and those who are watching us. We, before I start uh, talking about uh, the sermon today, uh, the sermon title is Learn to do your best and God will do the rest. I, I want to uh, have a word of prayer first. Thank you God for gathering us here in your house. Thank you for everything you have done in our life. And now as we are going to share your word Please impress our hearts and minds with your Holy Spirit and let us understand those words and be transformed by them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, when uh, Paula asked me if I could preach today, I was like thinking, I didn't even think of uh, this is a women's ministry, I didn't know that, but. That's why I think you know this is God's work. No, women's ministry and Mother's Day. I'm going to get there, <laughs> yeah. and I know that uh, it would be. I didn't think of that. I just but understand. I say, well, I love this. Uh, those verses from uh, Proverbs uh, 31. Those are very sweet verses for me, and. And I said, well, let's see, and God, you know, help me find the words, and I could put this together. I love this, the songs that we just sang. We know there's love, uh, sorry, there's uh, joy in every sound when there's love at home, right? And there's one who smiles on high when there's love at home. This is a very sweet, uh, those are sweet lyrics that I really love to hear all the time. So our uh, verses, uh, verses 27 and 28, found in, Pro in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 31, it reads, it reads as follows. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. I just read from uh, the New King James Version. Could be a bit different from other version. On August 31st of last year, the UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, I hope I pronounce it, I think it's Portuguese, underscored the vital role played by women as healthcare workers essential staff 
teachers and caregivers, helping millions globally, both within and outside their homes. However, we know that decades of limited and uh, fragile progress on gender equality and women's rights show how indebted we are still to women around us. And when I say women, we can think of our sisters, our cousins, grandmother, and mothers, who I want to s talk, to speak about today. Uh, so I want to, we know that women have been, you know, the, on the front line uh, during the pandemic. Most of the health workers have been wi our women and mothers. And we know that women, mothers, they got our back when we were a kid, a bit when we were less, a bit adult. And again, in the midst of the pandemic, when things were really very difficult, you know, we saw mothers, women on the front line, you know, providing the care that we desperately needed. So we want to pay tribute to that. And not only the UN Secretary General understood the vital role played by wo women, but Ellen Jerry also made way back a very bold but accurate statement. In the, in the Adventist home, she wrote, we may safely say that the distinctive duties of women are more sacred, more holy than those of men. And she continued to say, let women realize the sacredness of her work and in the strength and fear of God take up her life mission. Let mother educate her children for usefulness in this world and for a home in the better world. So we understand that the mother's influence is an unceasing influence. And if that influence is always on the side of right, the children's character will testify to her moral earnestness and worth. It's too big, it's a very big influence that mothers can't and should not leave it to others to mold their children. We know that a mother's smile and her encouragement may be an inspiring force for a child. A mother can bring sunshine to our hearts, right? By a word of love or a smile of approval. On the other hand, the world is, I would say, full of corrupting influences. Fashion and new trends exert its very strong power over the young people, and even over us who are not that young. And it's believed, and Ellen Joy White agrees with that, when a mother gets to full, fulfill her duty to instruct, guide, and restrain her children. We know we don't like to be restrained, but pretty much when I heard the word restrained, I think of rules, right? Principles, laws. So when, mother, when a mother gets to fulfill that duty to instruct us, guide us, and restrain us when appropriate, we know that those children will turn away from the evil and naturally accept what is good. And we, it's, pleasantly ironic that sometimes our friends who have kids, and they repeat pretty much the same thing that their mom used to say, you know, the same instructions, and they say it in a funny way, and so we can see how lasting that influence can be. So when we find ourselves repeating the same thing that our parents used to say to us. And we know that sometimes if I'm, I don't think of, God, which is not correct, but I think of what my mom would feel if I did something like that. So this is very such a powerful influence. And <clears throat> we know that what mothers stand for is so remarkable that even Jesus compares his love and care to a mother hen. As, he, as Jesus grieves, Jerusalem before, sorry, he grieves before Jerusalem in Luke 13, verse 34. 
So we saw that in chapter 14 of Luke, verse 34, Jesus said, how many times I wanted to put my arms around all your people, just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not let me. And the same thing you see in Isaiah 66, verse 13. There's a promise God made in Isaiah 66, sorry, verse, uh, chapter 50, uh, 66, verse 13. So the, the verse 13, God promises, as a mother comforts her child, I will, I sh will comfort you. So the word mother uniquely arises images of life-giving energy, self-giving love, and nurturing care. Not only does, does God love like our mother and beyond, but we experience God's love in our mother's love. The love of a mother uniquely marks and makes our human experience. The human child remains dependent on a mother and father longer than the offspring of any other species, right? Even after college, we still say, wow, my home, referring to our mother's or parents' home, right? We say my room, and we know the doors are open, and parents' arms wide open to welcome us back anytime. But when I talk about the sermon title, learn to do your best and God will do the rest. I want to talk about the life story of a special woman, late Sonia Robinson Carson. And she used to say that's her motto, learn to do your best and God will do the rest. She would repeat that motto to her two sons, Dr. Ben Carson, the famous uh, pediatric neurosurgeon, and his older brother, Curtis. We don't know much about the older, the older brother, but we know about Ben Carson. So the mother of Ben Carson, uh, Ben Carson's mother, whose name is Sonia Robinson Carson, she was a single mother with very, very for, formal, you know, very little formal education. No training, no formal training at all. And she married a, a man who was already married to someone else. Uh, so she married a polygamous man. And, but she's credited with having been the molding influence on her two sons. And on the day she, Mrs. Carson passed away. That's back in 2017. Dr. Ben Carson said something very touching, very, I would say, you know, eloquent. All that I am is because of the love of my mother. And he said that his mother was one of God's greatest blessings to him. And he said that thanks to her foresight and discernment, that he could reach his dreams. So like every mother, Mrs. Carson, you know, dream of great achievements, accomplishments for her two sons. While working as a domestic for successful families, she noticed that those families, those successful families, would spend more time reading than watching TV. And she devised a plan for her two sons to curb TV time. So let's you know, spend less time. And she asked them to write a book report or two book reports every week. Prior to that, and their grades you know, start to quickly improve. And prior to that, they were lagging behind compared to their peers in school. But 
her, uh, their mother, Mrs. Carson, could observe, could see what works in other homes. So she wanted the same thing for her two sons. That mother, that women had faith in her children, despite their shortcomings, and she never accepted excuses. So later, Dr. Carson and his wife, Candy, created the Sonia Award, which recognizes community role models and people who uphold Sonia's standards and share her drive in the society or at home. So Dr. Carson, he could honor his mom while she was alive. Most of the time, we do that late. So it's today, it's every day that we need to take the opportunity to sh show appreciation to our mom, to honor her for what they mean to us, what they are to us. Her life story, you know, finds a very practical application in the verses, you know, 27 and 28 of Proverbs 30, 31. I want to re read again those verses. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. So late Sonia Carson watched over the ways of her household. She could watch the kids were not studying. They were not, they were spending too much time watching useless, useless TV programs, TV shows. And as a faithful guardian, she was observant of her family and their ways. Just like most mothers out there and those in our church, she did not choose to eat the bread of idleness. In other words, she avoided laziness and excuses she could have made easily, right? She could have said, well, I'm a single mother. I don't have any formal education and she could accept you know her fate like that but she didn't she was working to she had to work two jobs sometimes and she was there for her kids in the end you say that her children rose up and they call her blessed a woman of such character and wisdom rightfully receives the blessings and praises her of her family and we have so many, many reasons and many examples we should and must appreciate our mothers or the mothers for. And I would like to go back to the Bible where we may see examples of mothers and what they have done and how they inspire us to honor them, to appreciate them, not only on a day, but on a daily basis. I would like to start with Sarah. You know, Sarah, I would say Sarah is the mother or example of mothers who waited. I know that Sarah had to wait 15 years before God renewed, you know, his promise. And 10 more years before that promise, you know, became re a reality. So she, she gave birth to Isaac. So when I say the, wor the verb wait, I want to refer to the Greek sense of this of this uh, verb is not wait passively it's stick around is watch for wait for something to happen so they don't give up mothers don't give up mother mothers stick around and we see that like Sonia Carson she divorced the polygamous husband she had but she didn't give up on her kids, right? She stuck around. Things were very difficult. And they wait. Mothers wait for us to grow mature, to become wiser every day. They're patient. We have like Hagar, which, who is the example of mothers who endured, like many other single mothers that we have encountered in our lives. We know that Hagar was kicked out of their home because she was a she was slave. But she had to endure, you know, the hard reality of being a single mother, being by herself, and caring for her little son, for her son, for Ishmael. 
So we know that there are so many other mothers out here raising their kids on their own, working two jobs or more, suffering abuses. We have Rebecca, which is, oh, I would say, the mother, the example of mothers who believed. Because Rebecca, that's very important. When she had, she knows that the Lord said, you have two nations inside in your home, yeah? Two people, and one will be older, stronger than the other one. So we know that, and the younger, sorry, the older will serve the younger. So she knew about God's words, because when the twins were struggling, and she said, well, if they're like that in, in the, inside, of, inside of me, so can, can you imagine at all, I'm not too eager to give birth to those kids because they're already struggling in the birth. So she got the word that she knew what would happen, that the younger, sorry, the older will serve, the older will serve the younger. And she believed in that word. Of course, she used tricks she couldn't wait, but she believed in that word. And she know when God says something, that's true. So our mother, they believe and they transmit their faith, the good things they learn, they, tr they believe in that. And they give us that sense of belief. They share that with us. And we have like Leah and, and Rachel. They are the examples of mothers who witnessed or and suffered deceit. You know the story of Leah and Rachel, right? Leah, she's the older, so she had to get married first and then Rachel. So like it happened to uh, late Sonia Carson, who was deceived by that man, we see the same thing. That case, you know, they witnessed the deceit because <clears throat> first their husband, sh you know, should marry the, f the older sister first and then the younger. We have also the examples of mothers with a plan in Jochebed. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, right? She had a plan. Mothers always have a plan. And if they don't have a plan, they will improvise. So it's those are things that we need to appreciate mothers for. They had a plan at that time when Moses was born, they would kill all the males, all the first males, right? But Moses was saved because not only God had a plan, but also the mother had a plan also, right? Put Moses in the basket, and also with the sister watching over to see what's, what's happening. So we see that our mothers, they always had a plan for us. Just like Sonia Carson had a plan, devised a plan, so their son could read books and develop that taste for knowledge and for, for books. We have also examples of other mothers, mothers like Samson's mother, we don't have the name, or I don't, I didn't find a name, who followed the rules. We know when mothers are pregnant, they are eager to follow all the rules, right? Our friends, a friend who's not seven at Adventist, yeah, she loves, she say, wow, pork is the best meat ever. But I remember when she was pregnant, the doctor say, oh no, <laughs> don't even eat that, don't even put, and she just like, and she embraced that joyfully. And I remember we would have discussion prior to that. She would say, come on, Dan, don't say that. She called me Dan or Danny. She said, Duh, oh, don't come with that. But she followed the rules for the well-being of her son. And she still now sticks to that habit of not eating pork. So mother can do all of the things for us. They follow the rules for us. Remember Samson's mother, she know that, okay, I'm not going to drink and give any fermented drink to that kid, to that son. No unclean food. No razor should pass on his head or touch his head. So she knew she followed the rules. We have also examples of mother, like Naomi, right? Mother-in-law, in that case, who shared her faith with Ruth. My mother was the first seven Adventists. She joined the church when she was 15. And now, everyone in the family is a member of this church. So, 
with mother, they share their faith. Not only, and the same thing happens with Dr. Carson. His auntie, who lives in Boston, when the mom moved to Boston, so that's when the auntie shared her faith, the Adventist faith with them, and it became Adventist, the mom and the two sons. So our mothers, they share their faith with us, the faith they believe in. We have Hannah, who is the example of mothers who kept her promise. So the moms keep their promise to take care of us, to accept this life, nurture the life they, they bring into the, the world, and defend this life. We have the example of mothers who believe in miracles. And we have Elizabeth, right? The mother of John the Baptist. She was, you know, old in age. But regardless of that, when, the, when God says something and she, could, she believed that miracles can happen. Mothers believe in miracles. Sometimes you, you don't see how you would have a, a happy outcome. But mothers usually, op they're optimistic, right? They have that sense of optimism. Things will be okay, don't worry. Sometimes it's our first day in school, they would encourage us. The best mentor, there's no better mentor than moms. They would teach us, they would give us, you know, that confidence that we need to move forward. And we have like example of blessing, which is Mary, right? Jesus' mother. So women, mothers are blessing, are great blessing. Just the way Dr. Carson said, one of God's greatest blessings is my mom. And I think it's also your mom. So we learn a lot from our mom. And when I think of late Mrs. Carson's life story and that of all the moms out there, those following, you know, I don't know the author, but the, those following lines reflect well what I feel. A mother's love, what can compare with it? Of all things on earth, it comes nearest to divine love in heaven. A mother's love means a life's devotion, and sometimes a life's sacrifice. With but one thought, one hope, and one feeling that her children will grow up healthy and strong, free from evil habits, and able to provide for themselves. Her sole wish is that they may do their part like men and women, avoid dangers and pitfalls, and when dark hours come, they can trust in providence, in God, to give them strength, patience, and courage to bear up bravely. Happy is the mother when her heart's wish is answered. And happy are sons and daughters when they can feel that they have contributed to her noble purpose and in some measure repaid her unceasing, unwavering love and devotion. That's pretty much what I feel. And we see that mother's principles and goals for their children bear a stunning and beautiful resemblance to God's ideals and wish. We witness love, devotion, and sacrifices in the first place with both of them, with both God and our mothers. They wish that we are healthy and strong, right? free from evil habits or sins, and trust in God during dark times to find peace, strength, patience, and courage to bear up bravely till the end. They tires, tirelessly continue to instruct us, guide us, and restrain us, or advise us whenever appropriate. Mothers are God's greatest blessings. There's no doubt about it. To conclude, if we Christians can say God is love, our first and most powerful experience of human love usually starts in the womb 
and continues, continues in the arms of a mother. As a beneficiary of that God's given potential, a mother brings new life into the world, very often at the risk of her own life. A life the mother accepts, nurtures, and defends day in, day out. So sons, daughters, those who are husbands, let's do our best, as Sonia said, and God will do the rest, to appreciate those mothers every day for who they are to us. And I know that my mother, that's always, that's her, one of her earnest wish is found in the song that we're going to sing, 653, that I stay at Jesus' feet till the end. So I think our mothers would like to see us be led to Jesus or to stay at Jesus' feet. So he said, lead them to thee, these children, of, uh, these children dear of mine, thou givest me, by, oh, by that, thy, sorry, oh, by that, thy love divine, lift them, my God, to thee. There is no blessing quite so dear as our mom to love year after year. May God bless all mothers out here. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers here and future mothers. May God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. That's great. Our closing hymn is 653. Could all stand, please? Thank <clears throat> you. 